We are back at it again with another passage in my favorite section, the psych Soch section. So let's do passage nine in the double AMC sample test. Let's see if this is one that needs flow charting. Categorical perception refers to perceiving continuous stimuli as belonging to discrete categories. A defining characteristic of CP is that the same physical difference between two stimuli can be detected when they belong to different perceptual categories, but cannot be detected when the two stimuli belong to the same category. Okay, so just kind of the definition of categorical perception. In a study examining CP of color, native English speakers were presented with a target color from the blue-green continuum. After a five-second delay, they were shown the response options of two color patches, one of which matched the target color. They were asked to select the option that best matched the target color. Participants' responses were significantly faster and more accurate when the response options belonged to different color categories than when they were from the same color category. This finding occurred even when the difference in hues between cross-category options was equal to the difference in hues between within-category options. So what I'm imagining um, this experimental setup to be is that they showed them a color on the blue-green continuum. Then they took that away and showed them two responses and said, pick whichever one matched the color that you just saw. And it sounds like what they found was that if the difference between the two colors that they showed in the second, the second time around when they were asking you to pick which one was the target color, if the difference was a completely different category of colors, then you are going to be able to process that faster. Like for me, I, it is obvious to me that the one on the left is uh, green maybe not everyone would agree with me, but it, that looks green to me. And the one on the right is blue. So I would be able to categorize these very quickly, but it seems like if I had chosen this color, which is also in the green category, I would have a little bit more trouble or just a little bit more of a delay selecting which of these was the target color, even though the difference in hue was actually the same as it was between these, as it was between um, the target color and the blue one that I showed earlier. That's what I think this is, at least. The linguistic determinism hypothesis suggests that CP of color is a consequence of language. Native speakers become attuned to the cross-category differences that are defined by the color names in their language and less att attentive to the within-category differences. So now they're just saying that language may have something to do with it. The fact that we call both of these green has something to do with it. To seek support for this hypothesis, study two sought to replicate study one with Barinmo speakers. The Barinmo language does not have separate color names for blue and green, but distinguishes between null and war, which are two categories that vary on the yellow-green continuum. The Barinmo participants were trained on the English-blue-green distinction and were tested both with stimuli from the null war continuum and the blue green continuum. So hypothesize a little bit in your head about what we would expect to be the difference here. So if these Barinmo speakers do not have different names for blue and green, that's all one category to them, then they would have trouble distinguishing between those two colors. Whereas for null and war, which are kind of like yellow and green, they would be fine. Okay, so I think the only uh, flowcharting that I did here was to make sure that I understood the uh, experimental methods, which is not uncommon for psychosoch. Straight into the questions, uh, 48 says study one is replicated with split brain patients. Participants are presented with the target colors only in the left side of their visual field. This procedure would specifically allow the researchers to investigate whether. So if you're not familiar with split brain experiments, they are the most interesting thing I think I've ever learned about, period. Essentially, um, they cut the corpus callosum in uh, several humans, and so the left and right hemispheres of the brain could not communicate with each other. Um, they didn't really have a whole lot of like residual side effects because a lot of things in the brain are on both sides of the brain, but there are a few things that are what we call lateralized. So in one hemisphere or the other, and language is one of them. Language is pr pretty much entirely in the left hemisphere. So this question is actually testing several things, but let's draw a picture to imagine what we're seeing. I'm going to draw like a grotesque picture of a human. <laughs> this looks terrible. Um, 
Okay, anyway, I'm going to keep it. So they presented the target color to the left side of the visual field, which means it's going to hit the right side of both of the eyeballs, or the retinas, I guess I should say. And if you're familiar with the way the optic nerve kind of bifurcates, then it kind of halfway crosses over like the, uh, the, the inner corners of our eye kind of cross over to the op- optic chiasm, but the outer corners kind of just stay on the, uh, the sides that they're on. So if we follow the line, the right side, the inner corner of the left eye, which would be right here, is going to cross over in the optic chiasm and go to the right side of the brain. And the right side of the right eye is going to stay in the right hemisphere of the brain. So now we have this color in the right side of our brains, but we are a split brain patient. And so we cannot kind of get that color over into the left side of our brain. The question asks, what is this allowing the researchers to do? A says the patients show CP in the absence of access to the color names. So that is something specific. The color names is an aspect of language, obviously. And language is entirely on the left side of the brain. So we would not have access to any color names. They're very, the split brain patients are really, really interesting, but I encourage you to look them up if you're having trouble kind of understanding what I'm saying, we could tell in our minds that green was what we're looking at. This color green is what we're looking at, but we could not say that like the, the part of our brain that can speak, that can control our language, our mouth and and the mental processes that are behind language is not aware that this is even being shown. So would we be able to show categorical perception if we did not have access to the color names, which, you know, the linguistic determinism hypothesis may be crumbling if that was the case. So I like that answer choice. Um, it, it's basically, I think, asking you, do you know kind of that language is lateralized and that split brain patients would not be able to kind of bring language over into the right side of their brains? So I like that. B, the corpus callosum plays a significant role in color processing. So the corpus callosum is just a bundle, a huge bundle of fibers that are just crossing in the middle of your brain. They're not really involved in processing. They're like entirely just a highway of nerve fibers. So that one doesn't really make sense to me because the corpus callosum doesn't really do any processing. So I don't like it. C, the patient shows CP in the absence of access to color perception. So I would think color perception would be sort of like an occipital cortex type thing. And there's occipital cortex on both sides of our brain. So that's probably not right. D, the frontal lobe plays a significant role in the recognition of color. Again, the frontal lobe's on both sides of our brain. So I don't like that one. A is the best answer here. 49, which impairment is least likely to interfere with a participant's performance in study one? A, having significantly fewer rods than the average human so what do rods do? This I think this question is essentially asking, do you know the difference between what the rods do, what the cones do, what the occipital cortex and the fovea are? And you should know that cones are for color perception and acuity. And so those, if, if you had significantly fewer cones than the average human, you would probably have trouble with color perception. Absolutely. So that would interfere. A lesion in the occipital cortex um, would likely cause a lot of difficulties with color perception. That's like deeper into the mental processes behind vision. And so you probably would have trouble having a lesion in the fovea. So what you need to know about the fovea is that it's like almost 100% cones. And it's where the majority of our cones actually are in our eye. So that would likely interfere. But rods are for black and white vision and night vision. So if I had significantly fewer rods than the average person, certainly I would probably have difficulties viewing anything in the night, viewing maybe black and white. But my performance in study one would not be inhibited. 50, a follow-up study compares the perceptual discrimination performance of Barinmo speakers and native English speakers. What does the linguistic determinism hypothesis predict? Compared to the perceptual discrimination performance of native English speakers, performance of the Barinmo speakers will be. So this is what we kind of talked about up in the passage, and I think it's basically wanting you to predict the results of the follow-up study or predict how the Barinmo speakers would perform. So we kind of talked about it already. If the Barinmo speakers do not have a different 
name for blue and green, they likely will not do as well discriminating between blue and green. So that blue-green continuum will be difficult for them, whereas the null war continuum, they'll be fine. So A says equal on the null war continuum and worse on the blue-green continuum. Yep, exactly. And when they say equal, they are comparing it to the performance of the native English speakers on the blue-green continuum. They would not be as good on the blue-green continuum, so B is not right. They would be fine on the null war continuum, so C is wrong. And this D is all wrong. 51 says the stimuli used in study 1 most likely vary in which physical dimension? So the stimuli in study 1 was what I was drawing up here, where uh, some of them were blue, some of them were green, some of them were teal, whatever. So this question is asking, do you know what characteristic of light or what physical dimension of light causes the differences in color? And that would be wavelength. If you remember, red has the longest wavelength, violet has the shortest wavelength, and so on and so forth. Okay, that was a nice quick one for you. If you enjoyed the video, please hit like and subscribe and leave a comment below letting us know what you want to see next because we're almost done with the sample test. I will see you next time.